How do we navigate through a maze? This is one of the classic problems in computer science. The first step for a computer scientist is to turn it into a discrete problem, in other words, a graph problem. Here is a labyrinth with an explorer. This, by the way, is Theseus from Greek legend, who was taught how to solve labyrinths by his lover Ariadne. We'll come back to Theseus later. And here is a graph representation of the labyrinth. We want to explore the whole labyrinth, but all we can see from any given location is the next steps we can take. In graph terminology, when we're at a vertex, we can see its neighbouring vertices. So, from a given start vertex, how shall we proceed? We're going to look at a whole range of algorithms for exploring a graph. And our first algorithm is called Depth First Search. Another name for it is Ariadne's Thread, in honour of the trick that Ariadne told to Theseus. Rather than just state the algorithm, let's build it up step by step. Here's the first thing we might do if our graph was a tree. We might do just a simple recursion. Question. What would you expect the output of this code to be when we call visit A? Pause the video and work it out. This is what it does. It gets stuck in an infinite loop and eventually the program gives up. The trouble is that we drew the graph suggestively to make it look like there's direction, that the root is at the top and the children are underneath. But there's nothing in the definition of a tree that guarantees this. A tree is an undirected graph. A has B as one of its neighbours, and B has A of one of its neighbours, so that's where the infinite loop comes in. OK, let's try again. I've modified this function to keep track of which vertex we're visiting now, and also of the parent vertex, i.e. where we just came from. That way, it knows to exclude the parent when it's going through the list of V's neighbours. Question. What do you expect the output of this code to be when we call visit of D, none? Pause the video and work it out. Another recursion error. This would have worked if we were running it on a tree, but I snuck in an extra edge between C and D. So this graph has a cycle D, C, A, D, and the algorithm gets stuck in an infinite loop going round and round the cycle. So we need a way to save ourselves from getting stuck in the loop, and we can do it by explicitly marking the vertices we've already visited so we know not to return them. Here's the fix. I'm going to call it DFS recurse for depth first search. The name depth first comes from thinking about what it does in trees. It searches all of the vertices descendants, no matter how deep, before it goes on to siblings. And I stack in recurse in the name of the function because this algorithm is recursive and because in a moment we're going to look at a non-recursive way to program the same thing. Okay, let's step through what this algorithm does. Just a quick comment, it's always a good idea whenever you see an algorithm to run through a simple example with pen and paper by hand, paying particular attention to all the points where it makes a decision. There's absolutely no substitute for this in learning to think algorithmically. I'm going to go through this depth first algorithm, but for most of the other algorithms in the course, I'm going to leave it for you to try them out. Okay, let's get started. First, we call DFS recurse on the graph G at start vertex D. This vertical line here means everything I'm going to write down next is happening inside this call to DFS recurse. First thing we do is iterate through the vertices in lines three to four, and I'm not going to bother to write that down because it's just a simple for loop. Next, line five, we call visit on D. And the blue line here marks everything we're doing inside our call to visit D. First, we mark D as visited on line 8. Then we get a list of D's neighbours and we go through them. The first neighbour is H, which hasn't been marked as visited, so we'll call visit on H. H gets marked as visited, line 8, and then we get a list of H's neighbours, line 9. 
H only has one neighbour, namely D. We note that D has been marked as visited, so we don't need to do anything. And so the call to visit H has finished, and so we return from it. And now we're back at D, and we're visiting the next vertex in the list, which is C, and so on. By the way, you may be wondering at this point, what's the point in doing a clever graph traversal algorithm if I'm allowed to just iterate through all the vertices like I do on lines three and four? Well, firstly, this graph traversal finds paths for us. The co this code doesn't store the paths, but if we wanted to, we could keep track of how we came to visit each vertex and that would give us paths. Second, if this were a real life graph traversal problem, for example, if you were Google and you were scraping the web to learn all the pages that are out there following links from each page, you wouldn't be able to iterate through all the vertices in advance, but you would keep your own list of pages I've already visited and that would effectively do the same thing. Let's go back to Theseus in the labyrinth of the Minotaur. Ariadne told Theseus to carry a ball of thread and to unroll it as he went, and then roll it back in when he came to a dead end. That corresponds exactly to what our recursive depth first search does, except instead of a ball of thread, it uses the computer's call stack. She also told him to mark with chalk the passages he had already explored, and that's what we're doing with our visited flag. But that raises a question. If Theseus had a teleport, and if he remembered the points in the maze that he was waiting to explore, in this picture he's marking the paths that he's waiting to explore with a single stroke of chalk, then why not just teleport direct to the next spot rather than wheeling in the thread? That's the spirit of the next algorithm, a version of depth first search that doesn't use recursion. Pause the video, have a read through this code, and then once you've done that, press play and we'll go through what the code does. We're going to keep a stack, listing all the vertices we've come across but not yet explored. We'll initialize it to hold a single vertex, our start vertex, which let's say is B. And the way the exploration works is it pops off the rightmost vertex. Here there's only one vertex B, and so it's of course the rightmost. We scan through all of B's neighbours and we add them to the stack, pushing them on the right. B has three neighbours. In graphs, there's no particular order to a vertex as neighbours, and here they happen to be stored in the order A, F, E. OK, done with B. Next iteration. Again, we'll pick out the rightmost vertex, this time it's E, and we'll scan through all of E's neighbours. Nothing to see here. E's neighbours are B and F, and both of those we've already marked as seen, so we don't need to push them. That's all we do at E. Next iteration. As usual, pick out the rightmost vertex. Here it's F. Does F have any neighbours we haven't yet seen? Yes, just one, namely G. So we push it onto the stack on the right. And now we're done with F. Next iteration, pick out the rightmost vertex as usual. This time it's G. G has nothing to add and so on to the next vertex, A, and so on. Basically, we're doing pretty much the same thing as our recursive depth first search, always probing the newly discovered deeper reaches of the labyrinth. And only once we're done, do we come back to our earlier choices. That's what the stack data structure does for us. There is actually a subtle question of whether or not this stack-based version and the recursive version end up doing precisely the same thing, and the example sheet would ask you to look into that. Okay, so before we finish with these algorithms, we should first do a complexity analysis. We're going to do this for all the algorithms we look at in this course to learn how the execution time depends on the size of the graph, the number of vertices and the number of edges. Let's look at DFS first. This initial loop loops over every vertex, so it takes big O of V. Then we have a couple of lines that are run once, big O of one. Next, we have this while loop. The while test is run for every vertex that we visit, 
and our scene flag ensures that we visit each vertex at most once. So lines eight and nine are big O of V. And then lines 10 to 13 are run for every edge out of every vertex we visit. And there are E edges in total. So they are run O of E times. This gives us total running time big O of V plus E. Good. Let's do the same thing now for recursive depth first search. The initial loop over all the vertices is big O of V. We visit each vertex at most once, thanks to the visited flag, which means that over the course of running the entire algorithm, we hit line eight at most V times. So that cost is big O of V. And similarly, the total number of times we run through lines nine to 11 over the course of the entire algorithm is big O of E. And this gives us a total runtime big O of V plus E, same as stack-based implementation. The clever thing we're doing in this analysis is we're not trying to find out how long each individual call to visit will take. That would be some horrible recursive formula. Instead, we're counting the total number of times we hit line eight, for example, over a run of the entire algorithm. This sort of trick is called aggregate analysis, and we're going to see a lot more of it in the final part of this course.